What's up, everyone? I have game pickups to show you from three states. Uh, a couple weeks back, I was in Houston, Texas for Retropalooza. Uh, this past weekend, I was in Columbus, Ohio for a concert that I had to work. And I have something to show you from Florida, which is where I live. But hey, that's still three states. Um, before I get started, real quick, if you have not seen the Video Game Sellers episode from Retropalooza, it's been up for a week. Go check it out. It has a lot of cool people in it, people we don't get to see very often, like Sprinkles, his new girlfriend Marley, who was really awesome, uh, Wood, the Game Chasers, uh, a lot of other people. A lot of people are in it, so go check that out. And also, a reminder, uh, I'm going to be doing a game trade event at the Wagon Wheel Flea Market in Pinellas County on August 26th, which is a Sunday. So if you're in the area, please come on down. Trade, buy, sell, whatever. It doesn't even have to be necessarily games. You have toys, comics, whatever. We'll have some space available for you guys to put your stuff out, trade and sell, and that kind of stuff. So August 26th. Anyways, let's get started. Oh yeah, and subscribe and give the video a like or a thumbs up or whatever and a comment down below. Uh, first, I'll start with the oldest of these pickups, which was the one from Florida. I posted this on Facebook and uh, that was two and a half weeks ago or so. Um, I got this from a thrift store on the way to work. Um, I dropped by and this thrift store has been pretty good to me recently, but mainly with finds of like a, ga a game for two bucks that trades in for like six or eight or something um, at GameStop. So, you know, nothing like super crazy. I, I got a copy of like Scarface um, on PS3, like the, the Don edition, uh, and that one was $2.18, and that's like a 20-something dollar game. But this Haunting Ground on the PS2 complete and in very nice condition for $2.18, Technically, I rolled the uh, the tax up to donate, so it ended up being like two dollars and fifty cents because I had another game also that I bought at the same time. Um, but probably one of my best single game finds in this entire year, uh, just because this is like a hundred plus dollar game complete. So I was incredibly happy. It was on the very bottom of the stack of like PS2, Wii, and 360 games that they had at this thrift store. And they've been getting a lot of stuff in pretty consistently, so I, I try to drop by there at least once a week now, but fantastic find. <laughs> uh, next, we have... I'll do the Retropalooza stuff, since we're going to go in order here, I guess. Really small, if you can tell, right there, in that little box, it's the Not For Resale copy, so it makes it a little bit more unique. I need to clean it up. It has a lot of Sharpie all over it. Um, but I'm going to make it look really nice, and uh, I've never had a not-for-resale copy of Mario Party 2. And from what I know, I believe that that's one of the ones that it's the it's still the same exact game. It's not like a, a altered, shorter version. Um, could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's the case. Uh, Mario Party 3 I picked up in a trade with someone. Um, I did quite a few trades that was sort of like the, the point of me going this time was I knew I didn't want to sit uh, at the booth because all I had was one box. I didn't want to sit there the entire weekend, so on Saturday I was only there for like three days. Um, Sunday I was set up a lot more, but I still got up and walked around a bunch. Uh, we have a Kirby Superstar, I, from the Mario Party 3, I'm trying to remember what I ended up trading for it. It was a part of, oh... Um, Battletoads, Double Dragon on the NES. I got Mario Party 3 and one other game for it. Uh, we have Kirby Superstar and a uh, Donkey Kong Country 3. Actually, it was this. The, <laughs> the Kirby Superstar went with that Mario Party 3. Uh, Donkey Kong 3. I have a kind of rough copy of Zelda. There was a parking lot deal. Um, I met up with a gentleman who contacted me saying that he had uh, three big totes of games that he just wanted to get rid of. So me and like three or four other people uh, picked out a bunch of stuff and bought it. And I think Josh Kosharski ended up buying the remainder of it all, which was still like a whole bin and a half worth of items. Um, this was in that bin out in the parking lot, Call of Duty Black Ops Declassified. Uh, we have, this came from OK Chief, Animal Crossing on the DS. Uh, complete copy. Had it for ten bucks. The fantastic deal. Chief had so much stuff. Uh, I think he was sort of like the winner of the weekend <laughs> with how much he sold and got rid of. He priced things to sell. I mean, ten dollars for Animal Crossing. That that went quick. Uh, Grow Lancer Generations. This was a trade. Um, I think I got this in like fifteen bucks cash for a PS1 RPG. 
Uh, don't remember which one off the top of my head. Sorry if I do, I'll come back to it. But this is a complete copy. This game's case is always so freaking hard to close because it's too thick. It never wants to shut all the way. I'm going to make a mess here quick. Uh, we have some GameCube titles. Uh, Animal Crossing, Kirby Air Ride, Pokemon Coliseum, uh, Yoshi's Woolly World. This was uh, in that parking lot box. There was actually quite a few other Wii U games, but I ended up trading a big stack of Wii U stuff to the Game Wizard uh, for... It's buried in here somewhere. We'll come to it. Uh, but for a Sega Dreamcast game, um, there was probably like $100 uh, worth of, th of uh, Wii U games that I traded him. Uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, that box in the parking lot. <laughs> uh, Valkyrie Profile 2, uh, Mystic Heroes, uh, PS4 game that was in that parking lot deal. Uh, Guilty Gear x Erd Sign. <laughs> Freaking... Guilty Gear with their weird-ass titles. Uh, Super Mario Galaxy, Smash Brothers Brawl. I'm going to fly through these more common ones. There was a Mario Kart in that parking lot box. A lot of these more like common titles were in that parking lot deal. Uh, a Mario Kart Wii. Another one. Two copies. This one uh, was a part of a trade to just to sort of make up like a $10 extra value in the trade. And... Parking lot copy of Donkey Kong 64, a little rough, but uh, actually has property of Hollywood video burnt into the back of it. This is cool, um, a, a Game Boy Color variant that I did not own. If you can tell my voice is a little screwed up, I've been sick since I got back the day after Retropalooza, and then I went to Texas, and there was a lot of flights involved there, and my voice hasn't really recovered, and I've kind of had like a little bit of like a chest cold and stuff since then. Back to the game stuff. I got a Tommy Hilfiger Game Boy uh, Color, and there were actually were two of these at the event. Both had the issue where the speaker is blown out, so I'm going to replace the insides and get a working speaker in there. Um, but this was the nicer of the two, and this actually I got from Josh Kosharski in a trade. I was, actually, I take that back, I bought it from him, uh, but the game I was going to try to trade him, someone walked up and literally bought it right then, and I just then handed the cash right to Josh. It was an interesting little, you know, three-way deal there. So, very nice, clean condition one, though, at least the front side, the back, you know, isn't perfect, the label's a little messed up, but uh, very clean front, and I'll get that working fully here shortly. We have the box only for Qbert 3. My uh, brain <laughs> remembered correctly that I did not have this boxed. A lot of people use apps and like uh, databases and things. I used to use a database to keep track of my game collection, um, but I have not update, updated that thing in years. It's been at least probably three years since I've touched it. So I have to use this, and it's pretty damn good. I have a, an interesting brain that remembers like prices and times and where I got something and that kind of thing. For the most part, obviously you can see it's not perfect, some of these, you know, but they it comes back to me. Like if I wasn't filming myself and having to try to talk to you guys, if I sat here for about 10, 15 seconds in silence, I could remember it. Um, but uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of times I'll be like, do I, do I have this box? I don't think I do. I have the manual, I have the game, but I did not have Qbert 3 box, so glad I got that and glad I remembered correctly. Um, we have New Horizons, which is a part of the Uncharted Waters series. Um, this is box, uh, game cart, and manual without the cover. <laughs> but um, I was mainly buying it for the box and manual, or a box and a cart. I did not actually like pay for the manual in here. They just kind of threw it in. And, uh, and a box protector also. And then... Packy and Marlon, I did show. It's towards the start of that Video Game Sellers episode. Um, box I knew I need to do a little bit of like cleaning up on and I want to try to get this sticker off um, but again uh, I have this game so I need to I'm gonna take the card out compare and see which one's better and then like uh, sell or trade off the cards but the manual and little poster and stuff inside were really nice uh, condition he gave it to me for a great price uh, fantasy star online version 2 that was from the parking lot uh, we have uh, Sukaden 2, which I showed in that video, and this is an interesting story because I haven't had a copy of this for about a year. I own it myself, I've owned it 
since it came out essentially, but um, I haven't had a copy to sell for about a year. Last time I had one, it was around 100, 125 or 120 bucks at like the high end. And uh, a guy came up, we were talking, he was interested in a Super Nintendo game, Sunset Riders, and he offered, hey, would you take this? And he pulled it out, would you basically take this for the Sunset Riders? And I was like, in my mind thinking, well, if it's like a hundred bucks, you know, I would pay maybe up to like 60 to $70 at most, you know, to get a, a copy of it to then sell. So I'm like, yeah, that, that seemed fair to me. I didn't know this was going for like $150 now. I don't know if he did, and we just made the deal too quick, but uh, I've since uh, talked to him uh, through Facebook, and I told him, like, I, I owe you some trade credit because I want to be fair and not making him think I, you know, thought it was, you know, worth more than I really did. So, anyways, uh, next Retropalooza in September, man, um, I owe you, like, another, like, $20 in trade credit or so, for sure. Um, next parking lot copy of Kalik. The DNA imperative, unfortunately, this case is shattered in multiple places, um, but besides that, manual, original back, and the disc, all in, in nice condition. Uh, we have Scaler on the GameCube. Uh, parking Lot, Parking Lot, and Parking Lot games. Aquapaza, uh, fighting, female fighting game on the PS3. Dragon Ball Fighters. Um, then Project Eva X, there was there was like another, I thought there was one more PS4 game that I might have traded away. Or maybe there wasn't. Maybe there's not. I think that was all of them. That's my brain again. <laughs> um, Mr. Chin's Gourmet Paradise on the Game Boy. I picked up a lot of oddities, just random things um, that I didn't have in my collection. So you might be like, why did you buy that? Well, because... I have a lot of Game Boy games, but I didn't happen to have this one, um, and they look kind of interesting to me. It kind of has, like, the cover, if you can see in the background, it's kind of hard to tell, but it kind of has, like, the original Mario Bros. feel to it. Not, like, Super Mario Bros. from Nintendo, but, like, the arcade-style, like, Mario Bros. Uh, at least that's what it kind of reminded me of looking at it really quick. We have uh, a couple of Taria Lynx games in the box. Woo! Excitement! But uh, I love the cover art for these. Slime World and Toki. Uh, I think I like the cover art better on these and like the Genesis versions. Um, but really clean copies. Nice condition. And that was a tra I traded some Game Boy Advance games for them. Uh, we have one of the steals of the weekend for sure. Retro City Rampage DX. 25 bucks, Sealed with bubble wrap. I mentioned in the VGS episode like... I picked it up on Sunday. I can't believe this sat out there that long, but the table I got this from had so many collector's editions and sealed items and a ton of strategy guides. I have no idea what the story was, but the entire weekend they were like half off of what they would be retail. And I don't know why they were selling them that cheap if they just literally were like, hey, please, let's try to get rid of them all, which I'm pretty sure that's what they did is they ended up getting rid of the entire booth worth of stuff. They didn't want to take anything home. Um, but 25 bucks, that's like a $60, $70 Vita game, brand new. Mutant Rampage Body Slam on the Philips CDI. And uh, there was a guy talking to me about it saying, I actually got this from Captain Retro's booth. Uh, there was one other game I got from Captain Retro. But there was a gentleman there um, who was telling me, he goes, I think this is better than the Streets of Rage games. Uh, it's really cool. And it has this lady <laughs> on the back, this cat lady, barely dressed with sort of large nipples and I was like hey that sold me I had to buy it right then um I think I paid it was like I don't know 20 something dollars 25 bucks Captain Retro was it 25 bucks I believe it was um then two of my favorite things I picked up for the weekend uh two box complete in box Game Boy Advance games Dragon Ball Advanced Adventure which is a hard enough cart alone to find, and every time I found it, it seems to be like $40, and I just never picked it up. But getting a pretty much mint condition complete in box copy, and I definitely, I paid up for these. This was like $100, <laughs> but perfect condition. And then a sound of thunder. Time is not on your side. I had never heard of this game. I had never seen it, and that cover art is absolutely amazing. This huge dino creature with like a manly arm about to tear this guy in half as he's like shooting him in the mouth. 
Um, but this is supposed to be actually a pretty solid Game Boy Advance game, and it's about, like, time travel and this guy that wanted to go back and, like, game hunt dinosaurs, and the time-space continuum got all screwed up. Uh, but very, very rare game, and amazing cover. Um, and if, if a cover had ever sold you on something, like, that's what happened here with me. I saw that, and I was like, oh, I looked up the gameplay real quick, and I was like, I, I have to get that. I, I, I couldn't I couldn't walk away. I got it at the same time of this, and the guy really, you know, he knew I wanted it really bad, so he only came down like $15 on the bundle total for the two of them. Uh, next, um, I showed this in that video. This was a trade. Trade a couple Sega Saturn games, like Burning Rangers and Albert Odyssey, and I got Amazing Spider-Man Web of Fire complete in perfect shape with the extra little, like, insert in there and everything. Um, that's the... Holy Grail of, like, the 32X collection in North America. We have uh, another OK Chief pickup, Shadow of Destiny on PS2. Also came out on the PS... Let's go back, because you can see I've already screwed that up. Shadow of Destiny on the PSP. Also, it came out on the PS2. I own that version, um, but never ended up picking this one up. Different cover art, but same game. We have... Here's what I traded uh, all those Wii U games to uh, The Wizard for... And that was a copy of Power Stone 2, um, man, or case, and the game disc, totally fine. Game, I guess game has a few little light scratches, but the manual, the staples, someone like looked like they tried to take the staples out, and it tore one of the pages, and like the inner insert had fallen out. So I had to put that back together, but overall, now it's a very nice looking condition copy of Power Stone 2. We have uh, Space Invaders Extreme 2 on the DS. A black label copy of Twisted Metal, which I actually did not have. I have 2, 3, and 4, um, but I did not have the jewel case original uh, of Twisted Metal. Well, original would be the long box, but original <laughs> Twisted Metal game. Uh, Alex Kidd, The Lost Stars, complete. Pretty shape. Futurama, which I did a trade with Kingsley for. Uh, Trampoline Terror, that was another OK Chief pickup, and then I got Captain Silver from Captain Retro, uh, from his booth. Alright, so now, make a little bit of room here, and show you the stuff from Ohio. A little background real quick on this pickup. Um, a friend of mine who I've never met in person, but I've talked to online, on the phone, and we've done deals uh, with each other for the last like four, maybe five years. Uh, his name's Aaron, he lives in Columbus, and uh, he contacted me saying, hey, if you want to go game hunting or something while you're here, let me know. I really don't have much time when I do these like single show little tours where it's basically I fly in on like a Friday evening, we do the show on Saturday, and I fly home Sunday morning. I said maybe on Saturday afternoon, but I ended up getting there Friday night, and uh, I texted him saying, hey, you want to just hang out tonight? I mean, I know it's like 7.30, almost going on 8 o'clock, but this might be the only time we get to hang out. And he said, sure. So went over, had pizza, and then shopped his game room and his like storage area where he stores his games. He's slowly getting rid of his collection, selling it off sort of like piece by piece at, the, at this moment. Um, but he gave me a sweet deal on this box of games right here, and this one game. Um, it was about 30 to 40% off what these items would sell for on eBay. That's what we were using, and that's sort of where we ended up uh, at the end. So thank you very much, Aaron. Uh, we have a long box complete copy of P.O.D. in beautiful condition. Um, a Now all this stuff is stuff that I picked up for myself for my collection, uh, except for there was one thing I ended up actually having in here that, uh, I'll just show that now, is a copy of uh, the Ignition Factor on the Super Nintendo, but that was sort of like a throw-in at the end of shopping in his game room, so that is something I already had, but everything else in here is stuff that I did not own. I actually did not own Shadow of the Colossus on PS2, because I've gotten rid of it in the past when it came out like on the PS3 in the bundle with uh, Eco or Ico, um, and, and then I own it now on, you know, PS4, but I was like, you know what, I want the, the PS2 version back, so I got that, uh, I got Firefighter FD18, kind of an uncommon one to come across, these are both just, uh, box onlys, a box for Artie Lightfoot on Super Nintendo, uh, Imperium, 
We have three Genesis games, uh, Granada, uh, Rolling Thunder 2, and Ease 3. Uh, there's three just loose random manuals in here. Uh, Congo's Caper, super, all Super Nintendo ones. Uh, separation, separation? That was a weird way to say that. Separation Anxiety. And Out to Lunch. Um, there's a air freshener for Star Fox Adventures from the GameCube, still sealed. Uh, me and Aaron both had very similar taste in collecting and like promo items and stuff. So it was actually kind of hard to shop his game room because we have so much of the same stuff. Uh, a little cool like cell phone charm for Loco Roco, which I love that game. It was just so ridiculously cute and fun to play and the music and it was so catchy. Um, a complete box copy of Blackthorn on the Game Boy Advance. We have a complete box copy of is it School Jagger? Because it has the little like umlauts above the U. So School Jagger, I guess. Uh, we have a box only of Arcana, another game I have the game and manual for. And then some interesting PS1 games in here. Uh, I've owned this one as well, but got rid of it. I'm not really big into fighting games. I only really originally bought this because it had like Cloud and Sephiroth in it. Uh, Air Guys. Um, Air Geese, God Bless the Ring, and uh, it actually has an RPG that I played and got all the way to the end of. Not a good RPG in this game, but uh, just an interesting title. I, I rebought it because of, of the characters Cloud and Sephiroth in there. Uh, but again, I'm not really, I don't buy fighting games um, very often. Codename Tinka. Tinka. Uh, we have Tempest uh, X3. Well, we got uh, Quix Neo, some like old, old school games that had a PS1 version that probably did not sell very well. Uh, G Police Weapons of Justice. We got the jewel cased version of P.O.D. I do collect variants of stuff. Uh, Pandemonium 2. You might be surprised, like, oh my gosh, that's a lot of PS1 games that you didn't have, but a lot of these are really oddball ones, like Roll Away. Um, we have Point Blank, which I've passed on getting this many times, um, but the price was just, you know, too good to pass up on it again. Uh, Shooter Starfighter Sandvine, Sandvine, kind of a funky one. Definitely one of, like, the budget titles, like, when it came out, I think it was only, like, $20 brand new. Uh, Colony Wars Vengeance, <coughs> the triple pack of Legacy of Kane Soul Reaver, uh, Legacy, uh, or sorry, Blood Omen, Legacy of Kane, and then Fighting Force. Like, it has, it's like two games that are very similar, and then there just wasn't another one, I guess, to put that made more sense than Fighting Force. Uh, we have, uh, Nectaris Military Madness. And Robotron X, Theme Hospital, Iron Soldier 3, kind of a hard one uh, to come across, In Cold Blood, and last is Crusader No Remorse. So it's kind of like a cool isometric view, like top-down shooting game. Uh, so there you go. Quite a unique lot of uh, PS1 titles and some cool boxes that I needed, so thank you, Aaron. And uh, thank you everyone at Retropalooza for the deals, and thank you the local thrift store for Haunting Ground. So, um, and thank you all for watching. Um, please go watch Retropalooza episode, give this video a thumbs up, comment, subscribe, and maybe I'll see you at the August 26th Game Trade event at Wagon Wheel. So, love you all, talk to you later, or soon. Peace!